So I finished sewing my seam all the way around that top edge and I've been quite busy. I've been and I've pressed it. So I, first of all I've pressed it with the seam um, so that this seam is going, sorry, so that the batting is going into the plain piece of fabric. So it's a little bit tricky now that it's in a circle, but I pressed it so that that seam would go that way, and then I've pressed it again so that I fold it over. It's just if you do that first line of pressing, it seems to help everything sit nicely. And then see all these little tabs here? They all just were flapping like this, most interesting, but not overly helpful at the time. And then, so then I've pressed those over as well. And then, as you can see, they are longer than the width of the fabric is, but we want that extra length. So we're going to pin those now, like I have with these others, so that they're a little bit looped. So I'll just pop that last pin in there. I've pinned all the others. So just make sure that they're sitting in a straight line from where they come out at the top. And then this other piece of fabric that hasn't got the batting behind it, if you run that around and just turn over to the inside a quarter of an inch with your iron, that'll be ready for you to stitch that down later. So easier if you do that bit now than later. And so now what we've ended up with is this ungainly looking circle with a lining with a folded up edge at the bottom. So it's now slightly shorter than the batting piece. We've got a few pins sitting in here, so we're going to run round again and do another one of those holding rows less than a quarter of an inch from the edge just to hold those in place so that that's all organised ready before we sew it to the top of the bag. So we're getting really close now. So I'm just going to run round and do that next line of holding sewing, so slightly less than a quarter of an inch from the edge just to hold those in place so we can take the pins out. Those pins have been getting at me, as they do. Okay, so less than a quarter of an inch away from that edge. Okay, thank you. So I've done my holding row of sewing close to that edge, holding so that all these loops are now attached at both ends, just a little bit loopy. Um, and then, so then what I've done is I've marked again with pins my quarter points. So from that seam again, front to back, and the two sides, and then, getting exciting, going on the bag soon. The bag, I've also marked my four quarter points so that we can attach this top to that. So I've got the seam facing me, that's the one with this loop at the bottom, and it would probably be easiest if you have this so that it's sitting inside out, so that your long strap is coming from the inside there because we're actually going to sit this whole bag inside there now so that we can do this seam. So you can see that that's all inside and we're going to bring that so the back seam is here going to your centre seam there as well. So we can pop some pins in and joining this on. So we've got our quarter points marked so we can pop those pins in. Oh, so exciting, this bag is coming together. So do all of your quarter points. And you may want to pop another pin in between just to hold it so that it can't move and go wonky on you. I don't want any wonkies at this stage. So that should all fit quite comfortably around there. And then we're going to sew all the way around there again with our quarter inch seam allowance. So slightly, slightly more than where your last seam was because that was less than a quarter of an inch. So we're going to go to the machine. Now if you've got a free arm machine like this one, you can take this little tray off. So it's what they call a free arm, so that you've got freedom to move things all the way around, and you can run it round like that, so that it can get underneath your machine a little bit. If you haven't got a free arm, so perhaps I'll do it in case you haven't got one. Oops, put that on straight. 
then you just need to take a little bit more care and instead of sewing it that way around you probably sew it from the inside so that you can see what you're doing um, coming around. So I'm going to start at the back near that seam and again it's, this is just your regular quarter inch seam allowance now um, going all the way around the top of your bag. So it's that easy. You can pull, pull your pins out as you get to them. You won't need them in there anymore. And continue on all the way around. So I've gone all the way around the top there. I've now got this piece attached to the top of my bag. So I can bring that up. Now we should go around and press that. We should press that seam up into that top band so that it's sitting up nicely. It's a little bit bulky so you might just need to apply a little bit of pressure when you're pressing that to get that up. And now you've got these loops, you've got this little bit here that we're going to turn inside. So when you've pressed that top up and then you hold, bring this bit down that you've already turned the edge in on with, when you pressed it, that should sit quite comfortably and you can just pop a few pins in if you want to because we're just going to slip stitch that down. So first of all, press that up, then slip stitch your, your lining piece down. And, and then we'll do some more top stitching to make those casings and that top of the bag sit nicely. So I've actually ended up turning my bag inside out in order to pin this top part of this uh, top band down because it just seemed to be easier to work with because we had pressed this seam allowance up which is a little bit bulky and doesn't always want to stay there but this edge that we've already turned under is just sitting over that quite nicely so everything should fit quite well so now we're just going to go around and slip stitch that down um, you possibly could just catch it in as we're doing some of the other stitching because we've got a little bit more top stitching to do on the other side but I think it would make sense at this stage to have that stitch down because it frees up um, everything so that you can do the other stitching more comfortably. So I'm just now going to go all the way around. So your line of slip stitching should pretty much coincide with your seam allowance or your seam line where we've stitched this piece onto the top here. So I'm on the inside of the bag and just stitching that all the way around. No, I won't make you watch me do the whole thing because that would be tedious. Hello. Well, that was um, was good. I've done all my slip stitching, um, as you possibly saw. I was just looking out the window of the boat using the light from the window, and the boat was another boat was going by. Life's just happening on the boat. Anyway, I have managed to finish all that slip stitching, so that's all done there now. So I'm going to turn the bag out the right way again, and it's getting quite exciting because it's so nearly done now. So we've got a long strap here and we've got these loops that are still a bit loopy so we've still got a little bit of work to do on this top section here. So if we now sew just very near that top edge so we want to bring these loops so that they're sitting flat at the top edge they'll still be a bit loopy down here and we're going to sew quite close to that edge maybe an eighth of an inch away from the edge um, and then we're going to do a second line maybe a quarter of an inch away from that. So one line of sewing all the way around, in, right through those loops and things, all the way around, approximately an eighth of an inch from the edge, and then another one approximately a quarter of an inch away from that. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing on this bottom edge, about an eighth of an inch away from that join there, and then a quarter of an inch in from that. So we'll do four rows of stitching, by which time this loopy bit will be quite loopy in the middle there. So we might just get started on doing some of that. And again, if you've got the free arm, this would be a good time to use it. I'll turn mine inside out and do it without the free arm. So I'm just stitching, remember, quite close to that edge, 
all the way around and then a quarter of an inch in from that. Making sure that your loops are sitting nice and straight on that top edge. So I've done four rows of stitching. I've done one quite close to that fold and then one in somewhere in the region of quarter of an inch in and I've done the same on this side about an eighth of an inch in from this seam edge and then again another quarter of an inch. Catching in as I go these loopy bits which is pushing this loop into the middle. So what we're now going to do, so that's four rows of stitching around, we're going to do two more rows because we're going to flatten this loop in the middle basically. So you may want to pop some pins in. I'm not sure how you feel about doing that. I probably generally won't put pins in because you know me and pins. But what we want is to spread that loop evenly to either side, basically flattening it in the middle. But we're going to do two rows of sewing in the middle. So I would start, personally I tend to start always at the back. So probably coming in half an inch from each edge you should have room to do two rows of sewing, or sorry, from each line of stitching, you, you're going to do two more and then as you get to these loops you're going to kind of flatten them in the middle so that there's a little, two little bumpy bits. So you'll probably see what I mean as I go around. Put those pins out because they'll be in my way. So I'm just going to, so there's a little bit of um, eyeball judgment but I think probably you can manage that. And it's not absolutely critical, it's just kind of nice to do it this way. So I've flattened my loop out here so that I've got a, a bit that's going to jump up on each side. And I'm just going to keep on going around at that same, on the same sort of line position. So again, flatten my loop so that I've got it as evenly as possible spread. Switch over it. These are going to form the casings for the, for the cord, for the drawstring cord that we're going to put in. So you could go around and pin these before so that you don't have to do this fiddling that I'm doing now, but I'm a fiddler. So this is the first row of sewing. The next row we're going to come around and do approximately a quarter of an inch away to make two lines of sewing in the middle. This long strap is lovely but long. So you can see I've worked pretty constantly with this walking foot today except where I had to do some buttonholes and I found that it's helped feed everything through really nicely. It hasn't been pulling or anything. So if you have a walking foot, it's probably a good idea to use it. If, if you have, uh, your machine may not have a walking foot, it might have a dual feed system, in which case that's great. So that's the first row of sewing done. Now I've just got to come around and do the second row. Now this time you just want it, it flattened when you get to those loops. You're not trying to make a bump between these two rows of sewing. So what we're actually doing is making two casings. So we're going to put two cords around the top just for the fun of it. So I've finished my stitching now. I've got six rows of stitching. Two close to this edge, two close to this edge and two through the middle, creating these little loops here. So that's pretty much all the stitching done. We've got to thread some casings in, uh, sorry, some strings into those little casings, and I'll show you how I do that. I've also sewn my buttons on my strap already. So we'd made two buttonholes, and I had worked out where I thought was a good length when it was on my shoulder, and I've put in my two buttons. Now you could put a third button in so that there's a little bit more room for adjustment if you felt 
that was necessary so that you can always have two buttons done up. So that's how that bit works. Now on here we've got these little loopy bits here which are where our strings are going to go. So I've got my bits of cord here, I've got some delightful safety pins on the end to help thread them through. Um, it can take some thicker cord than I've got here but uh, I happen to have this so this is what we're using today. So through the two casings you can go around together if you like, it's not terribly hard to do this. Just don't pull it through the other end. So I'm going to knot my two ends together rather than put anything else on at this stage. And just a knot. This kind of cord doesn't seem to fray or anything so it's great. So now we're ready. I've got my strap done because I've already done my buttons. And just then just tie this. So the way this works, you could just bunch it up and it looks a little bit strange, but if you get it to start to do a little pleat there and another little pleat there, just the, just the first time and then let it sit for a while, it'll kind of get the hang of automatically going into those little folds when you do it up. And then you can just tie it however you choose. There's various other toggles and things you can get, but that's what I've chosen to do. So it just does this little, if you can see that, little double pleat on each side. And if you just let it sit like that, it will just automatically go back into that kind of pleating when you're using it. So there we have one delicious shoulder bag with a couple of buttons. Goes over your shoulder, just like that. I'm all ready to go out. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, as I said, my pattern for that is available on my website on uh, gourmetquilter.com. It's called that shoulder bag and it's going to look something like that in the picture on the pattern. And the instructions are in there and this video to help you with some of the trickier bits. Thank you.